of Quake together, and obviously they're together still in Sacrifice. But now it's 1v1. Those kind of friendships must go to one side as soon as you zone in on the game. There are no allies in 1v1. Everyone is your enemy. But the thing about Rafa today is that he's already displayed massive mental fortitude against Razy. So he's been in a situation where he's on the back foot, he's had to recover, and he has been able to achieve that. I don't think he's been in a situation that he's not familiar with in this top 16 so far. I mean, I guess we'll see how he'll handle the rest of the tournament, though. We are getting through to the much later stages of this dual championship. Let's not forget the Quake World Championships 2017 million dollar tournament. This is pressure unlike anything of the year, but we are going into the game and getting things underway. So Rafa kicking things off with that saw lag first. I mean, what can be said about this champion that has not already been said or seen? Deadly champion, especially on a map like this one. The hang with the Nyx first is going to have a direct answer for the acid spit on reaction, but we may not see it used just yet. The hang forced to retreat. But at, as a complete analysis, though, Rafa with that saw lag, anarchy, Nyx, which snaps almost like the, the standard composition right now. I've seen that a lot, but hang on, a fight breaking out already, and Dehang trying to get away, picking up that health to save him. But Dehang on the flip side, three very fast, arguably the three fastest champions in the game. And Rafa immediately in there with the ambush, but wow, two amazingly placed rockets! You could have almost said Dehang was in big trouble there, but those two rockets were exactly what he needed to score first blood. Going back to what Rafa said in his little video before, you know, if he decides to all in, it's going to be a practically guaranteed frag for him at the time. And that was definitely an all in play. But Rafa, I don't think he quite counted on walking straight into a hundred damage direct rocket. Well, I mean, he saw those damage numbers, knowing exactly where the hang was likely to be. That's why he actually headed him off by the LG. Just didn't work out. Forced onto Anarchy. Normally when Anarchy's the one with the champion lead, he's the one that plays that super defensive game. But the hang, he's not going to overextend, does not want to put himself in a position where Rafa can take it. Still, though, to hang a minute and 20 into this, we know he now has that champion lead. He can play as slow as he wants to. Rafa with a nice quick turnaround rocket in the air, doing a lot of damage to the hang. How do we see a frag so early on? This late in the tournament, players have had an extreme level of passiveness. But it's also very explosive, and wow, just having to go into Ghost Walk to prevent even the chance of a rocket hitting him there. 45 HP wouldn't have taken much to take him out. And yeah, that Ghost Walk was make or break to hang, just using it in time. We saw Rafa took him down to about 45 health, no armor. Almost anything would be able to finish him off at that point, but there it is. That's the Ghost Walk. That's the beauty of it. To hang, you know, we said his favorite champion was Nyx, and in the hands of a good player, Nyx can be a nightmare. Oh, there's the read. Knowing that Rafa was likely to follow, didn't get quite as much damage with the rocket, but oh, Rafa with a quick turnaround rail around the corner. I think Dehang was probably thinking that Rafa had long moved on. Well, that was very clean. Dehang's now gone on to Slash. BFFs for life, but I mean, really, this is a map that Slash just runs away with. Literally, this is such a great map for her, just to build up that speed of the Plasma Trail, maintain the speed of the Crouch Slide. Really a fast, just fast-paced champion is Slash, and especially when he's up against Anarchy, who is, knows a thing or two about moving fast. Well, I feel like Dehang's entire composition is built around that, right? He's got Nyx, he's got Anarchy, he's got Slash, all three of them together. That is uh, incredibly difficult to pin it's down. It's built for aggression, right? It's a team that's great at chasing you down, getting in and out of a fight quickly. We see that sort of almost like hit and run style adapted by a lot of players today. But hang it's on, great here comes how you want to. Betting everything in on that rail, misses a couple though, so Dehang survives temporarily. Both players quite weak here, but Rafa with that heavy armor. Not too bad. Too. Trading out damage for damage, and Rafa's gonna end up with the heavy armor. Not too bad for him, but Dehang getting followed. Rafa with a nice rocket just before the mega health can go to the way of Dehang. Rafa seizing the momentum back himself three minutes into the first round. I love how just because that first fight went sour, it hasn't really deterred Rafa from being confident. Unfortunately, misses that rail, which would have been very important. Just catching Dehang fresh off the spawn. Taking minimal damage himself, really can still go in for this fight. The rockets are gonna exchange the Anakimir match. Who's gonna come off better in this situation? The ejection. ejection gets used, but it doesn't matter. That's going to be a crucial round for Rafa. I'm mean, again, after losing his first champion relatively early on, you said earlier on, composure. We've seen Rafa just today alone, and even sort of towards the later hours of yesterday, Rafa really has been th put through a bit of a gauntlet so far in some of his opponents, and just how close some of his matches have come down to. I feel like the same can be said about everyone that is still in this tournament. This top 16 was one of the most stacked brackets we have ever seen. It's been a complete bloodbath from start to finish, and it's not looking like it's going to be changing anytime soon. Although they go to hang with a bravey, doesn't actually get hit by any of the acid in the air, Rafa misses it and it's probably going to go down. Yes, again, Dehang's going to take the first frag of the round. That was a fantastic fight. I mean, he really just went into the belly of the beast there, straight in for the jump pad, catching amazing trail of LG, knowing that Sawlag was going to be tanky, was going to have the acid spit ready, but just amazing dodging in the air. Still, though, Dehang left with just 7 HP. I don't think Rafa was quite ready for just how low Dehang was, unless Rafa just wanted to completely bypass it and go for the mega health. That's one thing, even if you don't score a frag. 
just being able to sort of guarantee an item by them being a bit too far away or a bit too weak to fight for it, that's going to be a win in itself. Well, also, if he manages to keep to hang on low health, low armor, it's going to kind of really slow him down. What is quite a fast-paced, aggressive composition of these three champions. If you keep them on low health, then these engagements are going to have to be so dangerous for him. Still, though, Rafa behind two champions to three. Uh-oh. No, doesn't commit to it. That could have been dangerous. But hang, exercising caution instead, picks up the mega health. Oh, that heavy armor spawning as well. This does likely mean that those two pickups are going to have slightly different respawn times to one another. It's not going to be one of those kind of trade situations where they go back and forth and just take one each. Oh, Rafa just went straight through. We can see the hang doesn't quite have his ghost walk available. So Rafa, if he takes a fight soon, only just back up thanks to the hourglasses, pops it just in time in exchange for that injection. Oh, what a rail. That was a clean rail, but he's still got a little bit of extra work to do. Rafa's trying to fight back, but he can't to hang with another rocket. Rafa forced down to his last champion, the Nyx mirror match. Still loads of hang we can see down here trying to get hold of the heavy armor. Rafa here trying to stop him. It has respawned and it has gone the way of the hang. Rafa gonna have ghost walk, but almost no weapons. He has only just respawned. Probably has a rail, but I'm not quite sure what else he has. Yeah, he had to get a read on where he's gonna reappear there, and Rafa just went the exact right place. He had to go. Oh! He's probably see that one miss, that point blank rail, but I don't think it's gonna be enough. Unfortunately, even though he landed the rail, he was out of action just long enough for that lightning gun to finish the job. Strong round from De Hang, all done with Nyx too. That one champion win and tying things up one round apiece. I mean, I kind of expect this back and forth is going to be exactly what we see for the entirety of this set. These are two players, they know exactly how each other plays, they have years of experience with each other, and again, if we're going to be trading round for round, we'll probably find ourselves in a last map, last round situation at this rate. I mean, this late in the tournament is where you expect things to be as close as they are. Rafa being really hyper-aggressive, but he's got to be careful. Oh, he has got the lightning gun. Ghost Walk has popped out. Rafa, because he has quite a lot of health left, trying to stock himself back up. Oh, misses a rail, that could have been crucial! Ah, that one missed rail from Rafa. Hang on. Oh, there's the health. Yeah, enough to keep him alive. That one missed rail from Rafa, unfortunately, leaving to hang alive. Fortunately, uh, fortunately, near the health as well. The acid taking down almost caused a trade situation, but not quite. Still, though, we saw how much damage the hang was able to do last time. Oh, runs around with the gauntlet, but there we go. Look at the end, the Rafa oh. from below. I mean, just guaranteed in that stage. He's been knocked so high up into the air. Can't really do a huge amount to adjust where he is, and that's a guaranteed rail. Rafa being hyper-aggressive, forcing out the plasma trail. Doesn't matter too much. A free frag, and he's just going to wait for the explosion. Safely move out of there. That's going to put the hang on Anarchy last. Usually, we don't see Anarchy put as the last pick. Usually, you really want to sort of snowball up those injections, get as much health as possible, but it can work regardless. The hang now still has that last champion, Anarchy. We've seen plenty of damage done. It definitely is the signs of two players that are familiar with one another. Like, one thing about the way De Hang has been playing, he has been not just hyper-aggressive, I think, but confident in a situation where he'll use the next Ghost Walk, and, you know, you might expect them to use that opportunity to retreat or to gain distance or whatever. He'll just stay true to his guns. He just stands there and accepts the fight. He's not going to run away. He is confident he can take the frag. And in this round, he's been on the money most of the time. But uh, on the back foot... Oh, he has lost everything but Anarchy. Rafa still with his Anarchy and the Nyx if this doesn't go right, but you can see Rafa a little tiny bit of stack, but Mega Health about to spawn. That Mega with the Heavy, that is one healthy Anarchy right now. But that's the thing though, Rafa, look how much stock he is. Oh, so much trading damage in the air. Rafa going to be able to inject himself, get back up to full health again. But fully locked and loaded, every single weapon he has. And armor too, Rafa. I mean, only two minutes into this round too. It's only been two minutes out of five. I think this is kind of a precedent to maybe how fast these rounds could go down. Sometimes there's a change of pace from what we have been seeing today, but not with these two guys. Oh, a little bit of damage coming through to hang. Probably gonna be getting the best of this trade. Rafa though, being able to pick up the mega health before, so not so bad. Injection is back as well. Combination with the injection and the uh, mega health. I mean, that's a great situation to be with Anarchy. Here comes that heavy. Dang's trying to sort of catch him there, but the Hang was trying his best to sort of zone oh. him away with the damage. And even though Rafa able to pick it up, still very low on health, but plenty of armor, at least to sponge some damage. Is he going to be able to win this 1v1? Yeah. He's used the injection, so I mean, he's, it's going to be a long time before he's got that available, but with minimal armor, even with that. Almost traded out to the exact same health as well between the two of them. I mean, this really is a match of just two people that know exactly what they should be doing against each other. They don't overcommit. They don't hang around too long if they don't need to. But now at this point, Rafa can afford to do that a little bit more. He has that advantage. Two champions for one. Now we're past the three minute mark. Oh, just missing a rail. Now I think because those two rails missed, there really wasn't much to keep them both fighting. Here comes the LG. They're going to trade it back and forth. This is so close to cool, but to hang with the frag. 
There we go. 24 health alive as well. Rafa still has Nyx, but just in time for the mega health, but takes the fight straight away to hang, bringing it to Rafa, forced to ghost walk, very low on life. But he's reappearing on him, though, you're so brave. He opted to reappear and bank it on the rail. If that missed, he was absolutely dead. But if he hit the rail, this would be over. The round would be done, but Rafa, unfortunately, missing another rail. The important thing was that he got out of that alive. I think that really is what Rafa can take away from that exchange. He does live to fight another day, but how long he's not going to have Ghost Walk right here, but to hang took a fair amount of damage himself. Considering how close to hang was when he took those rockets, I'm surprised Rafa survived. Still though, Rafa able to just look at that together. Look Still. at that health difference. It's a exactly. long time before Mega. I mean, eight seconds until heavy armor. And at this health, it's a massive risk to try and fight for that one. But he's going in for it anyway. Oh, the Ghost Walk just in time again. Rafa alive with a slither of health. Desperately clinging to this round. 45 seconds away from overtime as well. But Rafa goes down in the end to hang, reading exactly where Rafa is likely to get away. He's, he survived for quite a while with that really, really unbelievably low health. I mean, I'm surprised he survived as long as he did, but Rafa finds a way. I mean, that, that almost started off an amazing play where he was almost dead, but he must have just banked that the hang is not going to be ready for me to reappear here. I'm going to reappear, tag him with the rail, free round. It didn't quite work out, but he got away with it. You know, he almost managed to get the round on that. It's important, though, that Rafa is showing he's willing to make those kind of plays because it's going to keep the hang on his toes. We can see Rafa down here just waiting out what's going to happen here. Both players being very cautious. Hang oh, on, no, Rafa! Yep, just... Out of nowhere! <laughs> Sawlag, I mean, she's a hunter, right? She's going to just sit up there and wait for her prey to come along. Oh, there's yep. the ghost walk pops. Dang, would have taken so much damage from below. If he didn't do that, 40 seconds, though, not going to be up for quite some time. No one likes getting hit in the backside by an LG on a jump pad. One of the worst ways to go out. So Rafa gonna chase this down. Oh, what a real three HP, but just in time to back the mega health to hang. Still alive, despite eating that rail that almost ended his life. Rafa is significantly healthier right here, and he's still being really aggressive. They're gonna trade the lightning gun, but really, Sawlag just has way more health. Rafa's gonna take that one quite comfortably. We've seen that quite often, though, when you have a squishy champion like Nyx with just not a lot of total health. Hang on, Rafa. Oh, 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 the suicide with the nail. Acid and nails. That's a violent way to go out. I mean, that did a lot of damage, but it did just as much damage to the hang, really, in that exchange. He's down to Anarchy, but we've seen what Sawlag does to Anarchy between a rock and a hard place. That is not a situation that you want. Oh, Rafa caught by Dahang on the way down. Dahang gonna be able to secure that heavy armor. But you said it before, right? Dahang really choosing these like hyper aggressive plays. All he had in that situation was a nail gun, and he got so close to taking Rafa down, but a little bit of self damage forced him down into Anarchy again. But Rafa with another amazing rail across the map. He really has been surgical with these rails in this round. Almost every single one has landed, and they have been unbelievably important rails to land to boot. Forced to use the acid, he hasn't landed, so it's not going to be any damage over time. Can't quite see him on the map, and it's going to be down for quite a while, too. The hang's going to be aware of that. Heavy armor up to hang there, ready and waiting straight away. Rafa, they try and bring himself some armor up. Still, though, this is going to be a stacked anarchy at this rate. Mega health up to hang gets that, too. Rafa's going to have the advantage in this situation. If he doesn't Ooh. score the frag here, even if he falls to hang to run away, which, hang on a minute, I think to hang, he's going to be quite aggressive. He's going to be well aware of how much health difference he has. Rafa threw a couple of rockets there just in case he came out of the teleporter, but oh. as soon as he decided to go back, that's when the hand came out. All oh, lots of damage coming through. Rafa misses the acid, but still alive. Heavy armor, but only has five health. So but hang on. Him. He's forced the injection, but no armor. The hang still can't tank those rails. That was a dangerous situation. Rafa had all the armor in the world, but only five health. Whereas the hang almost going down there. Rafa, one frag away from evening things out, two rounds apiece, but the hang, we know. Just be careful, it is just anarchy. We've seen how fast Sawlag can just melt you down with acid point blank. That's what these players are going to do at this level. We're so far into the tournament, they're just going to do the maths. If they calculate the numbers, they know how much damage they've done. They'll know exactly if they can fight or not. Speaking of which, the fight for heavy armor. Rafa still unbelievably healthy. Dahang's got to be so careful, he really can't afford to take even the smallest hit. Running away, but with no armor, and Rafa's rails being as on point as they have been, he still has to be so careful. Either of those last two rails from Rafa would have done it, but we see Dahang taking the fight again, running back as far as he can. Dahang took the fight, he took a shot, but made sure to get out of there before Rafa could retaliate. He's really not letting himself get bullied. I think that's very important is to make sure that Rafa isn't able to just kind of run around, stack up, keep Dahang on the back foot. Dahang without the champion advantage too. I mean, he kind of has to make something happen here. Well, I, I, don't to make it, I don't want to make it sound like Rafa's just, you know, missing rails. It's like a, a completely just on him. It is Dahang. His, his juking and his dodging abilities have actually been ridiculous so far. I know Anarchy's a great champion for that, but if you really know how to just make the most and make yourself as slippery of a target as possible, Dahang is clearly showing that right now. This situation, Rafa just does seem like he's in the lead. Still, though, three minutes, 40 seconds, the one-minute warning.
few seconds away, 10 seconds away or so from coming back up. And there's the answer. He knows the Hank went on there. Oh, but is he chasing him down? No. Bit of a rail from behind, I think. It's going to be a bit risky. Tank can't really surprise him as long as he's taking that acid tick because you're just going to see the numbers through the map. All right, we have 60 seconds left to find out what's going to happen here. One minute warning. Rafa with the lead. The Hang has the injection, but knows he has to be careful running away. Oh, what a rail. Has to get a couple more of those, and he's going to be in the money. I like the fact that he didn't use his injection early. He didn't really deem it necessary just yet, so he's got that escape. It didn't really look like Rafa was fighting there. Rafa was just looking for a way out of that fight, I think, and was able to get away with his life. And the Mega Health again going the way of Dehang, but 40 seconds. He can stack up as much as he wants, but it's going to be difficult. He is down two champions. Well, you just said it, right? I mean, why does Rafa even need to go for a frag at this stage? At the end of the day, he wants the win. He doesn't need to get a frag here to get the win. He just has to survive for 30 seconds. Make that 25. I mean, this is a very quick countdown so far to hang with plenty of work to do. Needs to not only just get Solag, but take out the next champion. I don't That's think what I mean. On the topic of the next champion, 15 seconds left to go, and Rafa still has Nyx available. He can delay that respawn, go for the Ghost Walk, and that's just eating up precious seconds. At this point, I think it's safe to say Rafa's going to be taking this round and evening things out two rounds apiece. This is pretty much, this is very much what we expected to see, right? I mean, these guys, they are so talented at the game. They do play together often. And really, at this stage of the tournament, every single match that we have had so far has been super close. I mean, the match we just saw between Avec and Vu was a real sort of <laughs> surprise. This guy hasn't given us a heart attack already with his close games. But, but that's even, the nature of this tournament so far. Even early in the day, when we saw the initial bracket of the round of 16, that was 16 people that potentially could be, you know, on face value alone, a champion of this game this year. There have been so much talent from literally all across the globe here today, all playing out, but later stages, right? We're sifting through to the absolute cream of the crop, but two rounds apiece. One left to go, but just the first map as well. This is just map one. Rafa was just laying that trap, but hang just so happened to go right instead of left. If he went that way, I think Rafa definitely would have ambushed him with that close range acid. Even though he has the ghost walk, would have forced the ability away. Would have been very important. Heavy armor though. We can see Rafa on Sawlag again. De Hang once again on this Nyx. Interesting matchup. We know it can go either way. De Hang has been incredible on this champion all day. Oh, Rafa taking a lot of his armor down, but able to secure the mega health in the process. He's running away, trying to bring himself some armor. Yes, he does. But the difference of health and armor, if Sawlag just has that stack rage to go on health, I mean, a lack of armor doesn't even matter too much if you're against a small champion like Nyx. And look at this patience, this slow pace. This is such a back and forth match. Oh, ever so slightly off the mark, and that one too. Rafa missing as well, both players ever so slightly. Not where it needs to be. I definitely wouldn't say it's a matter of nerves either. I think it's just a matter of just how well these players are positioning themselves. Oh yeah, definitely. These, these are two players with a lot of experience on like this is exact kind of stage, right? Rafa is a world champion in Quake. He knows what it is to play at this scale. But you know, new game, new year. Quake champions, this is the first time these guys would have experienced this game in this exact setting. Well, Rafa jumping over the wall, but eats a lot of burning gun damage. Oh, There's no. the acid, this point going to trade out. No! The Ghost Walk keeps the hang alive within a brink of death. And he just went the right way too. Rafa tried to get a read on where he thought Dahang was going to retreat to. Just what didn't happen to be over there. But just look at that divide between health. Rafa is way more prepared for a fight at this point. I can imagine it's so intimidating to be at the receiving end of that soul lag, though. Even if you are as accurate as we saw Dahang was just now, tracking with that LG till the cows come home. I mean, still alive. That is just how much life Sawlag has. That's why Nyx doesn't have the hardest time against Sawlag. If he was any other champion, he would have gone down. Hang on a minute. A nice amount of damage on the super nail gun, forcing into the ghost walk. He can ambush Rafa if he wants, but I love that. The tactical vomit, just in case he managed to tread a foot there. They exchange ability for ability, both weak. I actually love Dahang's use of the nail gun, though. It's not the first time this map we've seen him go for nail gun in like a point blank situation where he knows against a big target like Saw, like he is likely to hit the majority of them. Obviously, the nail gun being quite a tricky weapon to guarantee shots on. If you are close enough, you're not really going to be missing, and Dahang has been using it perfectly. Oh, we know he's got Rafa right on the back foot. Tries to use the teleporter. Can Dahang secure the kill? Oh, he sees him here. That's probably going to be a guaranteed death for Rafa. Dahang is using this aggressively. Oh! I mean, this is going to be a bit of a miracle if he gets this one. Rafa is so unbelievably weak. Rafa is so low, but then again, this is Nyx. Rafa can easily turn the tide. He has considered the heavy armor, though. That's going to be a bit of a problem. Rafa's still alive, and his ability to just survive in these last-minute exchanges has been so impressive. Oh, no. Speaking of which, doesn't quite survive that one. Dahang chasing him down, finally secures it. That was a lot of work just for one frag. I mean, though. it was a really important frag too. Oh, wow. And again, Rafa already getting hit by the rail. I love the way Dahang is just constantly looking to fight Rafa. If he knows Rafa has survived with like a little bit of health, Dahang doesn't seem content on letting him stack up again. There's the ghost walk again popped. 
the hang left alive. Oh, 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 hang on a minute. I mean, that's exactly what you said, right? If he knows that Rafa is on the back foot, he does not let him get away with his life. He's going to chase it down. He's going to secure the frag. And Nyx is such a wonder champion for doing that because you can weaken someone going for the ghost walk. They have no way of knowing when or where you're going to reappear. And in many ways, it's uncontested damage. If they can't see you, how can you dodge something that you can't see? Oh, there we go. Another one of these 1v1s coming down with the LG. Ghost walk popped. The hang gets that Rafa reappears. Oh no, this uh -oh. is looking really bad for Rafa, and there we go to hang with the turnaround. What an impressive showing, but that was a close map indeed. It was, and that's going to look good for him to hang, pulling off ahead one map up. This is, let's not forget, single elimination action now later into the Quake World Championships. The loser of this series will be eliminated from the tournament. That is pressure, unlike anything these guys would have played through this year in this game. Well, I know it was mentioned on the analyst desk, right, that. The hang is going to have to be confident with his ability to hit rails if he's going Sarnath that into Rafa. That has not been a problem. But we, we just saw exactly why he picked the map, right? It's, it's a very bold play. You, you can clearly see that the hang is not phased by his opponent being Rafa. But on the flip side, Rafa is playing really well himself. But really there, the hang, that bully with the rail gun. I mean, he really sort of prevented Rafa from getting anything going, especially in those later rounds. I mean, the rail gun just really is one of those weapons that when someone's having a bad game with a rail gun, it can seem very unreliable. But if you just have that surgical, like, precision accuracy, it can be the game changer. Oh. It can be shots just like that, right? That's anarchy. It is not a big target. And that's like a weird angle. It's from below shooting to up. There's all sorts of stuff to potentially get in the way. But seeing that magical moment, that magical opportunity to just nail that damage, and it can just be absolutely game-changing. Kind of funny, really. Dehang's in a situation where if he wins this next map, he's going to be moving on. And really, this is a battle of also finding out who is the best Quake Champions player in America as well. I mean, this really is the two best in this part of the world going head-to-head. -head. Whoever's going to win this, they really will take that title. Well, we were chatting backstage about this earlier, this potential matchup. And, you know, the, as far as I understand, this usually is a win for Rafa. These guys have played together multiple times in tournament, and Rafa usually comes off ahead with the win. This is a new game, though. New Quake. Could this be the start of a new chapter in the book of Rafa versus Dehang? Well, but Dehang takes the win. They're gonna get, this match is about to get really classic. You've got these two players that go way back. They're playing on this classic map. This could be the final map. And the team comp looks to be very, very similar. Rafa, though, instead of going with Anarchy, he's gone for Ranger. That's actually happened to both of them. They're both foregone Anarchy and gone for Ranger instead. But we've seen that Ranger can be just lethal on this map with that just colossal mobility and the options. It can be insane. But, I mean, I think Ranger, he, he's one of those like uh, quintessential, like, oh, I don't want to say default champions because he is interesting enough by himself, but he is deceivingly technical. The Dire Orb giving him some of the, the highest versatility in the game for just so many different reasons, but it's quite hard to properly utilize what you can do him for. And the big thing there is that, that comeback potential, that almost like, you know, uh, hidden tool up his sleeve in the Telefrags. It's so difficult to guarantee one of those Telefrags with the Dire Orb, but if you can do it, it can turn the tide of any fight in the literally the blink of an eye. Well, here we go. This could potentially be the final map. It's going to be Blood Covenant to Hang versus Rafa. Rafa is currently one map down, but that first map was unbelievably close. They take the fight immediately. New map, same start. It's going to be the Hang on that Nyx that he's been lethal on, but Rafa in this Sawlag as well. Rafa has been looking to take these early fights as much as possible, but Blood Covenant it can be quite hard to chase down certain champions here, and Nyx really just thrives on this map to Hang. Forced to run away from this engagement, it seems. Oh, no, but there's the read from Rafa, and Dehang immediately doubles back into the teleporter. Don't blame nothing him. to deal with that Do fight. not blame him for that one, but Rafa's going to know just how much of the divide the health and armor is. Like, Dehang is so weak, and he remains to be so weak. The surprise from behind, forcing the ghost walk. Rafa has to get a read. Where is he going to go? But there's so many options for where Nyx can go, especially in that section of the map, especially on this map in general, I suppose. Oh, if he just looks for half a second longer, he probably would have caught him. Still, though, tank indeed is the perfect way to sum up Sawlag in this current moment. Look how healthy took a rail doesn't matter. Oh. Look how much health he still has. That was probably one of the most clutch ledge grabs I think I've ever seen. If he didn't do that, that would have been a free rail two in a row. Still, they're trying to be as quiet as possible, it seems. Oh, ever so slightly not hitting. There's a rail again. Dehang has been so accurate on these rails, but this is Sawlag. Is a fight breaking down on the bottom. Lots of damage being traded out. But Dang, he still doesn't want to be point blank. He's still trying to take the fight. Doesn't quite manage to hit the acid. And even then, uses the uh, Ghost Walk to undo the ticking damage over time. Rafa still alive somehow. I mean, there were so many rockets going his way. Still, though, 75 HP. He's still one rail away from death. He has to try and stock himself up. And Dehang, we can see, has just taken the heavy armor. And he took the mega health beforehand. So Dehang in control of these big power-ups. Oh, he is going to connect the rail anyway. 
thought for sure that was going to be a disastrous situation for Rafa, but able to fire some nails to really deter the hang from sticking around. But as dangerous as Sawlag is in the game, I feel like with the hang's rail being as on point as it has been this entire series, he's against Sawlag, and she is one of the biggest champions when it comes to just a general hitbox. She's one of the easiest champions to hit with that rail gun, and it's a great combination if you're going to be talented with the rail like the hang is. Still, though, Heavy Armor now going to go the way of the hang again. So the hang really is just in control of who's going here. Oh, another nice rail coming out from Rafa. I mean, both players really have just been on point with these rails now. That rocket actually knocking Rafa into the doorway. Wasn't quite able to go as far forward as he wanted to. And they both had a little bit of a slow start early on, but still, I mean, that they are content just taking these fights every time. It's absolutely a game of cat and mouse. When you watch these guys play, it's, I'm going to chase you at all time if I think you're weak. But on the flip side, if I'm weak, you're going to chase me until I'm dead. I mean, it's just a constant theme that has happened from both these maps. Doesn't want to overextend Rafa, kind of just checking that rail just in case, but doesn't even stick his hitbox to that wall there. And again, going back to this neutral. I mean, it's a very hit and run style that both players are actually going for, especially like on this map. Maybe not so much on Ruins, but here specifically, they're just taking any damage they can from a distance, but no one's really continuing the aggression right there. Knowing how much damage they've done, they're just going to take what they can. Well, as long as the health difference is the way it is, Rafa's going to comfortably control this map. He's had control over most of the items so far, making that run all the way down to heavy. I think that's actually using that as an opportunity to not really overcharge, but just get some of the default health and armor. Just put yourself back up to regular. Well, you do have to be careful when you're playing someone like Nick's up against Ooh. Sawlag. Oh, oh, hang on, oh, straight no. through. Ghost Walk pop to hang, trying to get as much distance as possible. I can't really blame oh. him. If that rail clip, that would have been disaster. But to hang, living to fight another day. Again, that comes down to the versatility of the Ghost Walk. We've seen to hang, almost like use it as that assassination where you just get as close as possible, but in that sort of situation, definitely not. That is an escape tool through and through to let him live to fight the next match. Four minutes in, basically, and not one frag just Probably yet. Probably going to be a one frag round here. I'd be very surprised if we don't see go to overtime with how it's gone, but um, Rafa deciding at the last minute not to take the jump pad, but takes damage anyway. Wow, Rafa takes him down immediately out of completely nowhere. In some ways, it was a, a, it's always a massive risk going up a jump pad when you know the opponent's lying in wait, but Rafa just knew. He said it himself. If he knows the killer's going to be basically guaranteed, he'll pursue it. And he just went straight first, head on, knowing he had more health and more armor, and just melted the health away. And aware that the Ghost Walk wasn't available. That was actually a really nice shot on that rail. Oh, Two shots of which. on. Slash. Two amazing shots in a row. None other than Rafa. I mean, not surprised at all that he's playing this well. He's been on the back foot before. He did fight Razy a few sets ago, and that was absolute last minute. He made the recovery. Looking to do the same thing right now, but Dang survives barely. That's actually one, one of my favorite plays to watch, is rocket jump into the path of where you think the enemy's, enemy's gonna go into a frag. And we so nearly saw it. Hang on, got him below, that's probably gonna be a dead to hang. The acid, the acid didn't actually quite connect. I thought for sure some of it hit in midair, but regardless, I don't think it'll matter. There we go, Rafa getting that frag has secured the round. Five seconds left to go before overtime. I don't think to hang can take down two champions in at one second. That's gonna be it. <laughs> actually, like he got hit by the dire orb just before anyway. I think he maybe actually got a telefrag right before that round. The uh, look of Rafa's face right there. But realistically, what we're looking at right now is the fact that Sawlag has been such a dangerous champion throughout this entire tournament. Not just in, you know, the, this top 16, but the entire top 32 within the World Championships. But what the Hang is doing an amazing job of is just playing around how effective Sawlag is. And, and constantly, Rafa does like to go Sawlag first as well. Well, he's staying really... just out of range, dancing around. No, no matter what champion he has access to, he's making sure that he does not put himself in danger of that spit. But it's not really been the spit that's been making the difference. I think it is just that natural health and armor value that Sawlag brings to the table. I mean, let's just compare for a second. 150, 100 to what Nyx brings. That is significantly a huge difference for Sawlag. That's not even taking into account when you overstack with the health and armor. Pretty much double health, really. But double the health, double the work. Especially in these point blank engagements. Oh, to hang up to the challenge. He's hit so many of these shots already. I mean, he is up a map, is he not? That's Completely. really how it's going for him. Rafa up one round in the Blood Covenant. <laughs> oh, that ghost walk. That looked for sure it was going to be a direct. Oh, not so slightly connecting. That one will, though. I like the fact that um, Rafa was waiting a split second, trying to get a couple of rails first, and then picks up the Mega, but decides to take it at the last minute. Not taking it too early. I mean, if you take the Mega and then immediately get railed, you've kind of undone the damage that you've just taken. So, well worth waiting a little bit. Still, though, we saw that Rafa was going to be was the one to pick up both the Heavy Armor and the Mega Health, so he's going to be having the exact timers. Heavy Armor to Mega Health can be soon to follow. But here's the thing about those two power-ups. The, the, the respawn time of those two items is drastically different. You know, well over 20 seconds separating the two of them. Here comes Tang trying to secure the Mega. 
wants to try and get out of there. Really doesn't want to take too many hits in this situation, but doing a great job of actually railing Rafa on the flip side. Rafa, though, recognizing just how little health he had left, opts to go away, trying to build himself back up again. But here comes the heavy. I wonder if Rafa's going to try and fight for it. That was a really nice shot, though, on the hang as he came down. It really had to force the hang away. In that situation, I would be sure to see the hang chase it, but can't risk it. Do you have a rail worth of death against Rafa waiting in the mist? You just, you never want to challenge Rafa's rail. I mean, the hang as well, I know, but you just, if they have a chance to take the shot, you kind of have to assume that they're going to hit it. Speaking of which, two chunky rockets right there to hang in danger again. It has put the hang in a low situation, but still, Rafa now getting the mega health. Again, every time they trade out these engagements and Rafa ends it with more health, he's basically going to be coming off positive there. Look at that acid spit. I would be worried. This map has been such a dramatic change of pace, though. We saw on Ruins, which is a oh, very fantastic big, you know, map. shot. Um, Absolutely amazing shot there by Rafa. But now, you know, it, it, bo both rounds here have been very slow pace for the first couple of minutes. I think it's just a change of pace on the map itself, really. Oh, this could be a big adjustment from Rafa, you know, we're seeing a lot of Rafa's perspective, but he really is kind of controlling what's going on. He always has more health, he always has more resources. Hang on, here comes to hang, just behind. Oh, that was the ambush by... Yeah, there's no way he's going to survive that one. That was just demolition. That is also one of the hands-down worst experiences to be stuck in in this game. Just point blank to a Sorlag with acid ready to go and either a rocket or an LG or anything that can just delete health from point blank. Sorlag does it best. I want to say, Dahang did a fantastic job of undoing all of that health and armor right there. I know he almost went down himself, but his accuracy and confidence on that bridge was superb. It has actually got him the mega health too, so Dahang, even though he is down a champion, now we have a slash with stacked health. Fresh off the respawn as well, like, not messing around at all. Now he's going to see himself the rail. He's got all three of those magical weapons that he needs. Heavy armor up any second too, Dahang, if he can secure this. He could put himself in a great situation to deal with Sorlag. The more health and army you can have when you're up against this scary creature. I'm trying to be really careful, but really, Dahang has got to get something going there. Trying to fight, and he's actually doing a fantastic job. He knows Rafa's going to be weak. He's pressing the advantage, goes in with the LG, and now they made it even once more. A fantastically executed kill there. I mean, Dahang had his back against the wall, but he was Ooh. fighting out of that situation. Rafa taking a lot of damage on the way in. Oh, he sticks around. Ghost Walk popped very late, but look at how close he was to death. Yeah, neither player trying to fight that one. Rafa actually had the gauntlet in hand too, maybe just in case he went around the corner, but either way, Rafa, he's done such an amazing job of surviving these exchanges, and he's doing the same thing again. About 40 seconds away from our one-minute warning, though. Getting very close to potentially the end of this round, even on Champions, but Rafa very low on health and armor in comparison. I don't think he was... <laughs> wow, I mean... He just wasn't looking in that direction. Probably the last place he was expecting to hang to slide around, but Slash with that insane mobility. She does navigate this map basically better than any champion in the game. An amazing rail! Rafa, he has to get something going, but with 20 seconds left and that little health, is it possible? It was a charged rail, no less. 15 seconds left to go. Oh, he's getting chased, but there we go. The return frag turns around, fires rocket instantly and takes round, returning it to Rafa. I respect the die roll attempt. Like, I really, really respect the uh, telefrag because we said earlier on, right, it's a comeback mechanic. When, when you have that much health down and they have loads of stack, if you hit them with a die orb, their health and your health no longer matters. That is an instant kill, and it would have put him back in the fight. Evening things out, though, is the hang. He is up a map, so much less work to do in this situation than Rafa, but Rafa has come back from worse today alone, especially in this game. Let's not forget, it's set against Razy earlier on. It was so close, but it was really able to clutch it out. That was an insane set. Caught him mid-double jump there, so that's going to be some free LG. I like that with Rafa actually using the fact that Dahang is, is completely incapable of firing because he's in the ghost walk. Using that as a chance to just grab a free rail. Dahang can't challenge that at all. And if he did, you know, he, I think Rafa would have realized how little health and armor Dahang would have had at the time he uh, went for the ghost walk. He was in the air after getting hit by a ton of lightning gun. Oh, he's heard him. Knows he's directly above and a nice little combo there, taking out some of that health. Still though, Sorlag is Sorlag, even after taking all that damage, still very healthy and ready to fight. You can hit Sorlag with two rails and she'll still try and fight you. I mean, that's just the way this champion is. All in good, ever so slightly out of range, but that's going to connect. One more rail will take out Nyx from the hang. All rockets coming through too. Oh, Acid as well. Rafa throwing everything he can at the hang. 
That was really well played by Rafa. He knew that he was going to be able to get towards that Mega. If Dahang tried to fight for the Mega, he would have gone down. But hang on, Dahang survives. This is a crazy exchange, and the rocket connects. Rafa finally secures that frag, but hard fought by Dahang. He definitely could have taken that one. I mean, Dahang, I, I genuinely thought he was going to be able to win that exchange. He put out so much damage, but Rafa flinging everything possible in his direction is able to take the frag anyway. Dahang now put onto Slash. A couple of really junky rockets tries to go in for the plasma trail, but stuck in the air. You can even see the trail of just how Dahang got stuck up there for quite a while. A little bit of free rocket damage. Has got the Mega now, but Rafa with 100 health and the armor that he's inev inevitably going to collect. Now he's in trouble. Here comes the rail. Wow, misses one. Doesn't miss the final one, though, to hang with the trade out there. Yeah, there was no way that little armor pickup was going to be enough to survive that to hang. And you can take out that saw like a Rafa put onto Nyx. Nyx versus Slash again. This is going to be that high velocity, fast paced matchup. Especially now, Plasma Trail is ready to go again, but Rafa catches him on the way. Oh, oh no, Trail. he's in the oh, middle. Yeah, he has to absolutely get out of there. Only needs a little bit of LG. And the, wow, that clutch rail at the last minute. Confident. If that rail missed, he was done for good. But that's what it boiled down to. If that rail didn't connect, Rafa would have easily been able to finish him off. But to hang and making these shots count when he desperately needs to. And he got an amazing wow. spawn on Rafa. Just again, absolute confidence. And just like that, to hang on the verge of taking the whole series. This is so close now. One round away from eliminating Rafa. Quake world champion here in Quake champions today one round separating them can Rafa make the return that is the question I mean many players out there have expected Rafa to be in grand finals if to hang I mean to hang himself is an amazing player but Rafa not being in grand finals by many accounts would be considered an upset but a 2-0 as well to hang playing out of his mind what can I say he's just looking supremely clean I mean it really is coming down to hitting very difficult rail shots in risky situations that if he misses them he's dead if he connects them he wins the round and he is connecting them time after time after time it's a level of clutch that you expect at the quake world championships this far in the bracket i mean there's so much money to play for but not just money here the title of strongest american player both of these players want that mantle still though let's not talk like it's over even though oh, there is completely. one round left to go match point for Dahang Rafa is more than capable of making this comeback I mean if there's one player you don't count out it's going to be Rafa especially with rockets like that finishing off with another bold rail and both players they go to that rail when they know it's guaranteed they take the risk but they're not afraid to execute and hang on a minute catch his amazing spawn stuck on the jump pad gets another rail Rafa back on the board already one minute two frags I can't believe it one minute and Rafa has almost already won the round Ooh. to even things out two rounds apiece Rafa switch something on in his head and now we are working towards the tie well he did just say if there's one player that you really can't count out it's gonna be rafa nothing like the verge of elimination to wake someone up can make the comeback with ranger though i mean many many times the dire orb that really is the starter I also like how that sequence panned out though it was a great first frag by rafa down to just some really nice shots just like that one oh my lord and then also being aggressive, catching to hang on that respawn and just forcing that fight as soon as he can, chasing down a plasma trailing slash. I mean, that's difficult. That is you supreme confidence to be able to chase down someone that fast. Now Rafa with the mega, but the heavy armor going to the hang. And so many shots. These, are, these, these rails are so important because even if they don't secure the frag, it's going to keep the hang from being able to press the advantage the way he needs to to make a comeback. He's going to be consistently behind. And as long as, long as Rafa has the champion advantage, he needs to hang to be behind at all times. So the Mega Health not going to be up for a while yet to hang up there, maybe preemptively looking for it, or at least maybe trying to get a frag here on Rafa. Acid coming through, maybe just to zone out, has to be really careful to walk through this. Mega Health probably going to go the way of Rafa here. Yes, it does. I wonder if Dahang is going to try and take this fight. He's been hit by one rail. I mean, he really has to try and get out of there. Uses the die rob to escape. And right before he detonates it, tries to get one last minute rail. I mean, just little details like that are really what separate these players from the rest. Still, though, that die rob, even though he stayed for that fight, was able to get enough distance. Hang on, though. There we go. An easy frag for Rafa catching Dahang again, tying things up. It is not over yet. Rafa tying things up two rounds apiece. It's still going to be match point for Dahang, but Rafa just needs one more round. He's going to tie this up 1 1. If there's one player that can do it, it's going to be Rafa in this situation. Spin on the back foot, absolutely. I mean, it's so hard to call what potentially could happen here, though. Dahang, one round away from eliminating Rafa from the Quake World Championships, but Rafa, one round away from tying things up. Not even winning, just tying things up. But if we get onto another map, I mean, that's going to take a lot of fortitude. Both these players have access to that. It's going to test your metal for sure, test your stamina, your composure, everything it means to be a competitive player. There's that Mega already. That's a little bit of armor to be a bit healthier from those rails, but... Oh, Dahang though, away up from the launch pad, no armor, 
for Rafa. Taking a lot of damage here. One more shot. Oh, here comes to hang. Going in for the assassination. Goes for catches him off guard. The reappearance of LG to hang's back in this. From the shadows, indeed, to hang managing to take out that Sorlag. The champion that did so much work for Rafa in that last round, but no longer here. Two champions left to go for Rafa. And actually getting the rocket launcher from the corpse of his ally means he's going to get a little bit of extra rockets. Doesn't really have the chance to use it too much because Rafa with the chase down. And it's uh, two champions left each. Shades. No I mean, shades of map one rearing its ugly head. Now one minute in, a frag on either side. No longer are we playing slow and careful. We are going for the fights whenever we can. It's very similar to what we saw in that first map, 100%. Still, though, when you go in for that sort of game plan, you see just how dangerous it can be, how quickly it can all go to pot. Still, though, Rafa being careful to hang to. Listening out, he knows Rafa's nearby. And that's the jump pad. Immediately into Plasma Trail, actually, just trying. Oh no, fumbles his jump, can't quite get the rail, and now has to do a little bit of self damage. If he has a fight against Rafa now, and there's going to be a little bit of HP in it, may have regretted missing that jump. Still, though, the goal was to get the rail. We see that it is like the star weapon for Dahang so far. And Rafa, actually, as a matter of fact, is just hitting these clutch rails. You kind of need as many access to rail as you can. Oh, it's definitely been the star weapon for both these players. It's, it's been what has been allowing them, if they're ahead, it lets them stay ahead. If they're behind, it can start comebacks because it's just how efficient their ability to combo into it from other weapons has been. Plasma trail is pop, though. Oh, Dahang still in big trouble, but Rafa, weak himself. Dahang still alive though, 40 HP, has to be careful though, still prone to being railed. But Rafa, I don't think he's quite got line of sight yet. Oh, just got one of those nails, definitely could have been significantly worse if more of those connected. Still, I like the option though, Dahang just trying to do what he can to stop Rafa from coming in to undo the armor progress, Rafa. Sticking out a lot of nails here. He's Point going head LG. first, Dahang's dedicating. Here comes the ghost walk. Yeah, that's going to go back and forth. Rafa just trying to get out of that situation. Can't take the risk, especially when this is elimination point. I mean, Rafa did say himself, he always leaves himself an escape route. And if he needs to take it, he will. And that's what we saw. <laughs> Definitely a good idea in this situation when you are indeed match point down. I mean, one scary thing about Slash, though, just listen out for it. When she's crouching, silence. Just a complete lack of noise. Oh! But with how far she's moving, she could really surprise you. Yeah, Rafa's in big trouble after that rail connects. One more rocket. Looks like he's going to get it. There comes the ghost walk. Can Dahang catch him as he reappears? Unlikely. I mean, Dahang was full on health and armor there. Unlikely for Rafa to try and finish him off. Rafa's going to be able to get away again. This ghost walk has been saving him over and over and over again. And already trying to lower the cooldown as much as he can. He's been unbelievably slippery. But he's not going to have ghost walk now. Dahang, he's going in for the kill. Standing on the health, maybe, but it's not going to be enough. Here we go. Final champion is Rafa going to be eliminated from the Quake World Championship right now. This could be the most important single life Rafa has had in this game so far. He desperately needs to take out Dahang Slash and his Ranger now. But still, we can see the time limit. One minute, 20 seconds left to go. Dahang, the time is currently on his side. Yeah, the timer is not Rafa's friend right now. He's got to make something happen. He's going to be well aware of that. He's going in for the kill for the LG. Picks up a couple of small health and survives with fantastic health remaining. That was a good exchange for Rafa so that far. Rail, that missed rail. And another one that could have been huge for Dahang, but he misses two of them. Rafa, is he going to go in for the kill? Is he going to try and get away? No, he goes for the heavy armor. Dahang now very low on health. Ops, take a, ops take a week into Hang as a chance to take that heavy armor. And now with one minute remaining, this is one minute. 50 seconds after the clock, Rafa has to get a kill and he has to get it now. Dang, though, we can see he hasn't going to have Plasma Trail for a while now, but he's being careful here. 45 seconds left to go. So tense. One frag could change everything. And with the damage that you can output, it, it can happen at any moment. 30 seconds left. Plasma Trail back up and running too. Every second that ticks by is going to get more difficult for Rafa. Getting heavy armor. He has the health and armor, but can he catch the hang on the slippery champion? I mean, that's just what Dahang's done an amazing job of so far. He's trying to keep the distance. Dahang is playing for the clock. You can see he's being as careful as possible. Rafa looking desperately to find him. Ten seconds left. I mean, at, at this point, he is very much running out of time to hang. He is seconds away from eliminating the Quake World Champion. Five seconds on the clock. At this point, I don't think it's possible. It's going to be a timeout. And there we go. Dahang manages to pull off an upset and take out Rafa from the tournament. Such a good showing of game knowledge and accuracy. Both of these players played so well, but Dahang just using that clock to his advantage at the very end and moving on in this bracket. Congratulations to him. We'll see him advance 
Obviously, give it up for Rafa. Got in so far in this championship today. This will not be the last we'll see of him in Quake Champions. Oh, I, I have, I no, have doubt. no doubt. I have no doubt we will be seeing Rafa again. He's been playing out of his mind, but today, De Hang just has been on point, and we can expect way better things from him later on in this tournament, no doubt.